There's a new camera from Sony. Oh, now it's so pro with my top handle. Shall we talk about it? Let's do that. So today we were talking about the brand new camera, which I'm recording on right now from Sony, the FX30. This is a super 35 mirrorless camera. And it's kind of an exciting moment, I think, for a lot of filmmakers who couldn't afford the other Sony cameras because this is a very affordable, considering if you're comparing it to like the FX9 or Venice, an affordable way into the cinema line. It has the same color science all the way up to the Venice, so you can get feature film quality images out of this camera, but let's jump into the specs and then I'm gonna talk about my first thoughts having used it here. And by the way, I don't live here. I, I wish I did. I'm down here in Texas with Musicbed, working on some fun stuff for our Academy, the Art of Documentary. But let's talk cameras. So what is inside this camera? That's what you should really care most, what the sensor is. The difference with this sensor compared to the FX3 and the FX6 is it's still dual base, but it's 800 and 2500. Now you may feel a bit disappointed, but we're kind of getting spoiled with the 12,800 that comes in the FX3 and the FX6. The good thing about the dual base in this camera is that Sony claims there is no noise difference between 800 and 2500. And in the few shoots that we did already, I didn't notice a difference. It's almost like you're kind of taking a stop of ND off when you switch between those two ISOs. But the low light performance in this was still beautiful. Next, like I mentioned, it's a Super 35 sensor. So it's not full frame. You have that traditional Super 35 look, which means that your full frame lenses like I'm on right now, this is a 16 mil. Normally when you see my videos, the 16 mil in the full frame is really big. So you'll have to get APS-C lenses if you want to match up the focal lengths. But for me, I'm going to stick to my full frame lenses and just get wider ones. Now the body is, when I picked it up, I thought it was exactly the FX3 body but it's actually a bit smaller, a bit lighter, and uses a few more affordable components on the body's chassis. So that's how Sony's able to make this so cost effective. And when it comes to cost, what I'm being told is the body is around 1700 US, and then if you add in the XLR top handle, it's around 2100. This might be a lot of money for some, but when you think about it, that is so cheap to get into this cinema line. Sony has kind of a roadmap from the FX30 all the way up to the Venice. This could be a B camera on a film that's shooting on the Venice. It will entirely match. It shoots 422, 10 bit up to like, I believe 200 megabits. I'm not in too much of a stack guy, but this camera does come fully loaded. We'll definitely be using it as a B camera on our feature films. No problem there. Now when it comes to stabilization, Sony's added in this new active mode, which is like a step above their standard stabilization. It crops in a bit on the sensor, but as you can see these shots of following Lewis around the house, it's pretty stable. It starts getting closer to that gimbal territory. It didn't always take out all my footsteps, but that's because those are footsteps and they won't always shake a camera unless you have some sort of mechanical stabilization. But seeing it use the five axis internal stabilization, it's pretty awesome for walking and moving shots. If you throw that on with a wide lens, it's like I said, it starts to really feel like a gimbal. A few other quick features. Sony added a 16-bit RAW. I got a, it's a weird resolution. 4,672 by 2,628. That's a lot. 16-bit RAW it goes to the Atomos family of recorders over HDMI. I, I just, I, I'm gonna sound like an old person here, but to get anywhere near that 10 years ago when I was coming out of film school, you would have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. But now with the competition between all of these camera companies, you're getting cameras like the FX30 that are cinema grade quality. Like Netflix will likely approve this in my opinion to be able to use for productions. It's really quite impressive what's coming out of these tiny little camera bodies. In terms of focus, these are specs that I'm never too obsessed about because I often will go to manual focus, but it does have 496 points of autofocus. If that means anything for you, it uses both the phase and the contrast system so that in low light it will still grab eyes it'll track everything from animals to birds birds are animals but humans eye tracking when we were in the low gym there which was fairly low light it was impressive how it was able to track Lewis when he was running and doing his basketball plays by the way thanks to my friend Brady he's a really cool cinematographer from Utah he was helping shoot a bunch of this you can go check out his channel he was loving the FX30 he felt like it was 
identical to his FX3, so if you have any sort of Sony camera right now, there's no learning curve. Oh, and one really cool thing with the autofocus is when you switch between manual and auto, Sony's added this smooth transition. So I don't know if you've ever done that before, you flick it over to auto and it sort of grabs on something and ruins your shot. If you're like me, where you're constantly turning the autofocus on and off because you're wanting to really control exactly where focus is going or you want to leave focus and have someone walk into it, when you switch back over to auto, it's not gonna do that crazy jump and take the viewer out of the scene. It's gonna slowly transition to what needs to be in focus. As well, there is breathing compensation for the lenses. There's 14 stops of latitude in the camera, which is one less than the FX3, the FX6, and I believe the FX9. You won't really notice that. The 14 stops is still fantastic, but maybe it's something considering if you're looking between this and the FX6. You can see these beautiful shots with the pool. There's great dynamic range coming out of this camera. So, what are my thoughts as a director and cinematographer? You know, we own the FX3, FX6, FX9. We've shot multiple feature films on them and short films on the Sony Cine line. I'm not sponsored by Sony. It's just kind of the camera system. We've chose to use the documentary team, but I love this FX30. I'm not typically a fan of Super 35, but the price point and the weight and the size of the camera is very enticing. If I can get the right lenses, I could see us using it quite often as a B camera. And when I say the right lenses, is I need a couple wider lenses for when I'm vlogging, like right now. Like this is a 16 mil full frame. So I'll probably go get some sort of 12 mil equivalency so that I can get a wider frame. Vlogging is something I do for maybe 30 minutes a month. The most important thing is when we're shooting our films. And this is great for a second camera angle on an interview. That's when you often want to be punched in. We'll definitely set this up and throw a 50 mil on it and so we can still get that shallow depth of field. There's other times where you want to stick a camera in a car and you're at a 45 degree angle and you need both people in focus. Super 35 sensor is great for that because even when you're wide open, the depth of field isn't as shallow so you're able to get more in frame. But what excites me probably most about using this camera is just how clean the image is and how when I bump between ISOs, there is no noise introduced. You know, when you go to 12,800, truthfully, on the FX3 and the FX6, it's so clean, but if you don't pump enough light into those images, as I say, the shadows start talking. There's a bit of chatter. There's a little bit of noise in those. The image that I've seen so far is pure. It's buttery smooth. I can't believe it's not bothered. And so to know that we have this extra camera that we can pull out for some of those low light shots, that we don't need the 12,800 ISO, could be very helpful for when we're shooting our documentaries. So, what are my final thoughts on this? Well, I know a lot of people, because we've been giving away a lot of FX3s on this channel between Art of Documentary and some other competitions. I know a lot of people complain of how expensive the FX3 was. You know, it's nearly $5,000 Canadian, around 4,000 US. So this camera, the fact that Sony's doing such an affordable entry into their cinema line is exciting. It's gonna mean more people are gonna be able to get that high quality image for their films, of course. The full frame doesn't bother you. This might be the camera that you want. If you like that Super 35 or maybe you already have APS-C cropped lenses, that might be something you want. So there you have it. I'm gonna go do the most vlogger YouTube thing. Uh, ugh, I hate. YouTube sometimes. I'm gonna fly the drone while I sit in a pool so I can show off this amazing house. Again, thank you Music Bed for letting us crash in this mansion. And also thank you Sony for letting me try out this FX30. It's a fun little camera and we're definitely gonna be bringing it out onto a lot of our shoots. See you guys in the next one.